Hello and welcome back to Lorfan Gaming Plays Bars Gate 3. I'm your host, Lorfan. In this Bars Gate 3 build video, we're doing a Peer Ranger Gloomstalker Deadly Dual Wheel build. As always, like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more Bars Gate 3 builds like this. Do not forget to hit the notification bell so be updated more. Here's the pros and cons of this uh, build you have high mobility and initiative, which is good. Your dexterity is really up there. And, yeah, and if you know how to use stealth in this uh, build, you're going to do well. Uh, another thing is is the terrain. You get to abuse that and also you have immunity to it at some point. Last but not least, Dread Ambusher. One word. Now, cons of this build is you're not going to have that high DPS like a two-handed weapon user. And, of course, your hit points are really low. And after the first round, your DPS will suffer a little bit. So let's go ahead and do the character creation first. Now, with this build, I'm going to go ahead and say this now. At times, I'll be using one of the higher links, and other times, I'll be using Minsk. Now, speaking of Minsk, he will actually be good with this build. Now, if you ever decide to, I should say, multi-class, Rogue and Gloomstalker is the way to go. Mainly Rogue Thief plus Gloomstalker Ranger. So that's all I'm going to say. Now, we're going to go over the races, and I'm going to go over each and every one I feel like you want to do. Now, Elves first, their rate, uh, base movement is 9 meters per turn, which is good. You need mobility with this build. Elven weapons, you gain the use of long swords, short swords, short bows, and long bows, which is uh, nice. Dark Vision, this is good, up to 12 meters. And Fate Ancestry, you have advantages on saving throws against being charmed and cannot be magically put to sleep. That is great, everyone, on that end. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, say this now. The best sub race is the Wood Elves. Attack on 1.5 meters per turn with that. With your mobility, you're going to be awesome. So let's uh, go to the uh, next one, which is the Drow. Yeah, let's uh, select that. Now, uh, Dancing Lights is a uh, trolling ability. Fun to use. Now, the base movement is just like the other elves, which is 9 meters. Good. Now, uh, the uh, weapons here, that's uh, pretty good for Drow training. Now, another thing, here's a great thing about the next one. Uh, dark vision, superior dark vision, which is 24 meters. That's excellent in my mind. That takes care of another spell you don't need to cast. Yeah, and same thing as the advantages on the elves uh, cannot be put to sleep magically. And last but not least, of course, you cannot be, you know, you have advantages against being charmed. Now, this is just a role playing flavor Loth Sworn Drow, or the other one as against the uh, God Spire Goddess Loth. Up to you on that. So let's go to the next one. Humans, like the elves, 9 meters per turn. You got that mobility. Now, uh, this one's not bad. It's all right for this build. You want to use uh, other things, that's fine. Human versatility, this is the uh, bread and butter of this uh, build. You get an extra skill point, which is good. Helpful for dialogues and such like that throughout the world. So instead of your normal 4 or whatever, you get 5. You get one up from everybody else. Next up on the batting list, Gith Yankee. This is a surprise one. Now, uh, when you uh, cast Astral Knowledge, you gain proficiency in all skills of a chosen ability. Since we have high decks, we're going to take advantage of that if you're a Gith Yankee. Now, Gith Yankee gets the Mage Hands in case something's hard to reach. You can pull it down. Later on, they get Misty Step. Their uh, base racial speed movement is 9 meters per turn, which is like the other races, which is great. And they are also uh, uh, proficient in light and medium armor, as well as short sword, long swords, and great swords. If you're in long swords and short swords to dual wield. Half elves, let's go over those. Nine meters, just like both their parents. Yeah, you hear me right. Which is always great. Now, uh, next up is they gain their human parts for, you guess it, for equipment, civil militia. And here's another thing they gain their elven side, dark vision, which is 12 meters. You don't have to spell slot, of course, the dark vision spell. And fate ancestry, they gain uh, advantages against being charmed. And it cannot be magically put to sleep. And uh, the Wood Elf. This is the best race for it because you get 1.5 meters. In other words, you get, you get more movement. And if you want to go the Drow route, you get Dancing Light to troll foes. You just uh, cast it somewhere and then you just move somewhere else to have fun. Halflings. Now this one's a nice surprise. A pleasant one. 7.5 meters. That's alright for base movement speed. You're small. Lucky, uh, when you roll one for attack, roll, ability checks, or saving throws, you get to re-roll again and use the new dice. Now, Brave, you have advantages on saving throws against being frightened. Uh, in other words, advantage, uh, you, you get to be frightened, that's bad, but with that, you, it's good. 
Lightfoot halflings, they have advantages on stealth checks. We're going to be using some parts of this build with stealth if we can. We hide in the shadows and strike again. In other words, uh, we have make sure someone else attacks uh, our uh, party instead of them. Gnomes, this is a decent race as well. Actually good, 7.5 meters for movement speed. And they have advantages on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws, which is good. Now, the best one I felt for this build is, you guessed it, the Deep Gnomes. They have 24 meters for dark vision. That's great. We can see more in the dark, just like our drow friends. And Stone Camouflage, you have advantages on stealth checks. That's great for this build. So, I'm probably going to say is uh, best is the uh, humans, absolutely, wood elves, and half wood elves on uh, that. I pick humans for now, emulating Minsk. So let's uh, go over our na uh, Natural Explorer. I'm picking Beast Tamer. You get Find Familiar. What that does is uh, you get Familiar to help you out going through a place you can't reach. Which is uh, good. And you don't have to expand a spell slot. So this is uh, wonderful. We're going to select that. That's the main reason why I picked it. Now uh, next up on the list we're going to do is Bounty Hunter. And uh, what that does is you gain proficiencies, investigating creatures and such. And you have advantage against foes who are ensnared. So that's a good thing. Now backgrounds, I'm going to be blunt and honest. There's only two very good ones, Folk Hero and Outlander. That's it. Outlander gets athletics and survival. I want to take full advantage of those two. And another thing is Folk Hero, animal handling and survive, uh, I should say survival. Not survivor, but survival. What we're going to do is uh, pick Outlander. I felt that one's the best way to go. Now for ability scores, I'm going to say it's Dexterity is your main focus. Constitution, I put it as a plus one bonus. Now we're going to keep uh, Strength at 10 for now. That's the best bet with this build. Later on, you could get a Strength Potion boosted to 12. Dexterity will be 16. That will be uh, getting all our points later on when we level up into Dexterity. Constitution, I decide to put at 16 for a bit more hit points to counter our weakness since we have a bit lower hit points than the other, some of the other classes in the game. Intelligence, that's going to be our weak point eight. So, yeah, expect some uh, losses on some of those rolls if you have to go against that. Wisdom, I decide to uh, do is put that at 14. Reason being is there's some wisdom checks we'll definitely need to go through, especially with some ranger spells, which will help out us greatly. And charisma at 10 will be average when we talk to certain people. So, let's get on to the skills. Now, for skill selection, stealth, that's number one. Keep it at stealth. We already got athletics and survival. Nature, number two, you want that as well. Another thing is, uh, some people put it as perception, that's uh, one. Another thing is, they decide to do animal handling, that's a good one as well. And as for the other uh, skills, I should say for the human one, if you're picking human, I'll definitely say animal handling if you can. If not, just pick that as a regular skill and, uh, such yeah so let me uh, switch that to perception if uh, i can so yeah slay of hands uh, don't worry we'll gain that later on there's a certain uh, i should say ranger thing when we level up on that if you want to get acrobats that's good so i'll probably say athletic acrobats nature animal handling survival and if you can uh perception up to you all on uh, that so we'll uh lock those skills in and that's about it so let's level up now we're going to have Minsk here to level us up from 2 to 12. So like I said before, he's the best for this build. And we get to do a few things. I'll go over all the spells in the game. There's uh, some I will say meh for good reasons. You'll uh, definitely see. But for now, I'm just going to tell you what we get. So we get a slot and we get to choose our spell. So animal friendship, convince a creature not to attack you. Must have an intelligence of 3 or less. That's an all right, I should say, crowd control spell, but on a higher difficulty after combat, they'll be hostile. Cure wounds, uh, if you have any issues with keeping alive, this is a good spell to slot. Just remember, you have to uh, unslot when you level up. Ensnaring strike, this is a very good ability. It casts this ensnare on your foes. They'll be stuck for 10 turns. If they don't make their saves, they have to make a save in order to get unstuck each round. Fog cloud, blinds targets, heavily obscures creatures within. It's not a bad uh, spell to abuse and use. Good berry, 4 to 16 healing it does per berry. I think it does total, so it'll be 1 to 4 hit points per berry. I say potions are the best way to go, so avoid that one. Now, here's another one I felt like is very uh, good. Hail of Thorns, so it does weapon damage, and uh, add that to that. It's 1 to uh, 10 uh, piercing damage after. Uh, if it misses, it still explodes on saving throws. If it's a do save, they take half the uh, damage from everything. 
Good spell to clear the room, I'll say, or at least weaken your foes. Hunter's Mark, so it adds extra damage to foes, usually slashing. You have some characters using slashing weapons when you cast this. This is a great way to weaken your bosses and such. Enhanced Leap, this is alright. You triple your jumping uh, distance and such. Potion of Vaulting, that'll solve that problem. Now, Long Stride, that's not bad. Increase your movement speed if you want to go that route. There's other better spells for level 1. Now, I'm going to say Mint on Speak with Animals for uh, one reason. There's plenty of, I should say this right now, everyone. Potion of Animal Speaking. That'll uh, take care of that. For uh, level 1, I say Ensnaring Strike because you use that at the start. And Hunter's Mark, great way to take out tough foes and bosses. Fighting style, we're doing two weapon fighting styles. So when you make an attack with your offhand weapon, you can add your ability modifier on the damage of the attack. So if you do 1d6 damage, you get a plus 3 dex to uh, that, which is good. And the dex will go higher as you level up. So let's get to level 3, shall we? Now we're at level 3. So, yep, we get to choose our subclass. So things are going to start to look up. Okay, so uh, let's go to spells. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pick this one. I like this one, Hail of Thorns. Good AOE ability, abuse and use. Now, subclass, we're picking Gloomstalker. That's why we're here. Now, the most broken ability for this uh, class is Dread Ambusher. You can use melee or definitely range to abuse it. You get plus three bonus to initiative, and you get an extra attack that does a uh, weapon damage plus 1d8. I abuse this quite a bit with both variants of this uh, class. Superior Dark Vision. So you see, like the Drow now. Even if you're a human, this is great and wonderful. Dread Ambusher, so you hide from foes, and the more you're scared, the better you'll be able to hide. This is good to, uh, to I should say, line sight foes, give them out of line sight. Umbral Shroud, this is like the invisibility per spell. Put that on yourself, and then as long as you don't do anything for 10 turns, then you'll be able to be invisible. Just uh, watch out for people searching for you. The Sky Self, this is a great way to abuse with speak with the dead. In case you kill the exchange to someone else, then you might get some information out of it. Which is uh, not bad at all. It's, all. it's like a level 1 spell slot anyways. Ding! Level 4 everyone. So we're at level 4. Every level 4 we get a new feat. And this is a good time to replace your spells. So for instance you don't like one of my selections. Then you get to pick a spell you want to uh, take out and then put in. Now I'm going to go ahead and say uh, this one right now I like is Dual Wielder for this build. First this is what you get. You have a plus 1 bonus armor class while wielding a melee weapon in each hand so that's free AC with our high dexterity that's gonna add more to the AC which is good now another thing I like uh, next after I showing everybody the dexterity is uh, let's see here let's get to the next one you can uh, use two weapon fighting even if the weapons aren't light you cannot deal with heavy weapons you can have a heavy in one hand and your offhand has to be light this is uh, very good now, ding level five, and yeah, for this build, we're going to be using light weapons, though. But still, it's good to have. We get a few things. First, we get more spell slots, including level two. And level five, we get an extra attack. You guessed it. Instead of one attack per round, we get two. Now, that's very useful for this uh, build, especially Dread Ambush. And we get to abuse that. We gain a spell to pick. And we get Misty Step, so we now go around, disappear, and such. Now, get the Yankees down the line, they get that free. So they get two shots at using that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, say this. Bark skin, this boosts your AC up to 16. If you want to really boost up your AC early on, use a bark skin potion. So don't slot this one. Dark vision, you already got 24 meters. That's 12 meters. That's a nerve. Skip it. Now, uh, next up, I, if you really want to get this one, this is a decent one. Cures a creature from disease, poison, paralysis, I should say, and blindness. Good to have in case you get a lot of those. Pass without trace. Call forth a veil of shells and silence that gives you and your allies a plus 10 bonus to stealth checks. This is great in case you want to really stealth quite a bit with your friends. So I'll probably say that's the second best spell for this uh, level. Protection from poison. Not only this will cure poisons, but any attempts of future poisons against you long distance up. Well, guess what? You get to uh, not be poisoned much thanks to that. Silence. You get to silence any uh, cast or anybody in the area. And you're immune to thunder damage. This is a good alternative to have in views in case there's casters you're facing like crazy. Now this one is the best one. Spike growth. Uh, what it does is it uh, drops spikes onto the ground. Movement speeds by half. Anytime it's four steps enough spikes, they take to 2 to 8 damage per turn, which is good. And that's about it. I'm going to definitely say is at this time, spike growth, that's the best way to go. So let me uh, go ahead and select that now. 
And uh, there we go. So there, we'll pick that and let's get to the next level. Now, uh, next level is six. And we get two new things for our ranger, so let's go over our favorite Emnies. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, select, let's see here, where's it at? My notes say it here. We are select bounty hunters, so we're all uh, good with that. I'm just looking through my notes, sorry. Okay, Mage Breakers. You have a history of battling spellcaster. You gain for fist and arcana, and can, you can cast True Sight. You can uh, gain advantage on your next attack rolls. This is a level zero spell, so. In other words, we cast that and then go to town on them with our attacks. Now, uh, another one is on Natural Explorer. We're doing Urban Tracker. This will give us a proficiency in Slay of Hands. Since we have high dexterity, this will help us out greatly if we don't have a Steron or I should say a Rogue in the party. Ding, level 7 everyone. So we're past the halfway point. We get a few things. We get a spell slot, pick some spells, and we get a subclass future. This one's a great one. Iron Mind, you have honed your ability to resist mind-altering powers of your prey. You gain proficiencies in wisdom and intelligence saving throws. We, we have low intelligence. This will help out greatly. And I decided to pick Pass Without Trace, so this way we could use some stealthing. Another good alternative is Lesser Restoration if you want to go that route. So let's get to level 8. Ding, level 8. Now we're at levels of 4 once again, 4, 8, and 12, unless you're a fighter or a rogue. This is where we get land stride, difficult terrain. You become an expert at moving through the wilderness. Difficult terrain no longer slows you down. We'll be using a lot of difficult terrain spells from time to time. We can move in and out. They take the slow movement. We don't. Now, ability improvement, we're going to select for our feet. All points in the dexterity. Everything in the dexterity. I don't care. Boost that sucker up like it's no tomorrow. And uh, there he goes at 18 decks. Now we're at level 9. Ding, level 9, everyone. And we get ourselves a spell slot once again. And, of course, looks like we also get some other things as well. See, we unlock that. And we get the fear spell. Now, target drops everything, becomes fearful. They have disadvantages on ability checks and attack rolls. They have to make saving throws. If they see you, if you're, they're out of line of sight from you, they have to make saving throws as well. This is a great crowd control spell we get. And now we get our level 3 spells. Conjure Barrage, Challenging Weapons, Essence into a Destructive Widespread Volley. This will be AoE damage, so you use this. And folks will take damage, saving throws, they take half. Daylight, this is a good spell. However, we have other classes that could do it, so I would skip that. Lightning Arrows, this is uh, good. So initial damage is uh, 6 to 48, and then it jumps around foes for lesser damage. Great uh, uh, spell to abuse. Plant growth is another uh, good one. Put weeds on the ground. Foes walk through it. Their movement speed is quarter. So with our ranger advantage, we get to abuse that. Now, uh, protection from energy, we get uh, resistance in acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder damage. It's a good protection spell to have. I'm going to go ahead and uh, say is this one for now for this build because Contra Barrage will do some nice damage with that. So let's now uh, go ahead and get to level 10. Now we're at level 10, and we get a few things. We get high in plain sight. This is not like the Neverwinter Night one. You can flush yourself in the environment, become visible, and gain a plus 10 bonus to stealth checks as long as you stand still. That's the difference there. It's a little bit nerf, but you get to stay still. You run away somewhere, then you cast that, and just wait the next turn. In other words, wait till your party members are the ones who are targets, not you. Favorite MDs, this one I like to uh, pick, is Ranger Knight. You sworn the crown of nation. You, you fight against those type of foes. Gain skill, skill proficiency in history and, and heavy armor. So if you're going for that certain armor from that secret boss, that's a great way to go. Keeper of Vel and Sanctify Stalker. Those two are nice alternatives, but I prefer Ranger Knight. If I'm my main character is going for the uh, that armor, that yeah, you guessed that heavy armor, that's great to have. Natural Explorer. Now, there's three resistance. Cold, that's the second best one. Poison, that's the third. I would go with fire because there's a lot more fire foes. In the game, then of course, cold, especially at a certain place in the uh, game that's end game. Now we're at level 11, we're closing out on the cap, so we gain another uh, class features. And uh, we got we got a spell slot, we get that unlocked. And Stalker's fl uh, Flurry when you're swift enough, when you miss a turn, uh, I say strike, you get a new one. So you miss attack, you do it again. It's a do over, and it's, it's for free, so that's good. 
I'm going to go ahead and select Lightning uh, Arrow so uh, this way I can just use it to weaken foes from a distance. Then close in and stealth if I can. If not, at least we close in for the next round or so. In case we get some runners. Yeah, there's some runners in the uh, game. So that's, a I say, the good one. Another one is Plant Growth. That's another alternative to uh, have. Now we're at level 12. Again, levels of 4, 4, 8, and 12. We get ourselves another feat. And this last time, replace your spells. You don't like certain spells I pick? Change them out. Last time. So feats, we're going to do is dexterity. So build the improvement. And I'll put our dexterity at 20. So we'll be on natural 20 by the time we're at the cap. See, there we go. And that is it for leveling up. You guessed it. 2 to 12. So next part is build videos. Permanent ability score boosts. Here are the permanent ability score boosts. There are a total of one in each act, so there's three in all. Let's go over act one. If you decide to fight Auntie Ethel for the first time, get her underneath 10 hit points. She'll grovel for her life. Once that happens, you get a plus one ability score of your choice if you decide to pick it. Avoid your paladin doing this because if they decide to take the offer, they might become oath breakers. So either you or someone else in the party go for it. Go for dexterity if you want to. It's an odd number that will make your stats, but later on in the game, there's a certain ability you'll uh, get. I'm not spoiling it. Now, uh, next up is Act 2. I heavily advise doing this for this build. With a Steron in your party, have him buy, I think, Araj in Moonrise Towers. That is the alchemy slash she sells some nice endgame gear type of vendor. Yeah, bite the female drow. Once you uh, do that, I say with Steron. She'll give you the potions. Also, uh, if you uh, definitely did donate the blood, she'll give you that as well. The plus two strength potions are really useful. There'll be a demonstration on uh, that. Last but not least, it is the mirror loss. First of all, you got to pass some intelligence checks. So, for instance, if you pass here some arcana and or religion ones, then you have a choice to uh, what stat you're going to lose. Uh, don't worry, you'll be able to, you guessed it, remove curse from after all this. Once that is done, then uh, you have three choices. Make sure you do a quick save before of the choices. First one is if you get really lucky with hidden charisma checks, you get plus one charisma automatically and plus two stats of your choice. For this build, go for dexterity. Now, if for the second time, if you didn't get the charisma plus one, then you get the plus two stat of your choice, which is dexterity. You double lucked out, you get nothing. And do not try to cheat the mirror for the mirror, I should say the lost part. If you do... Then what happens is, is you get nothing. So let's go ahead and do the demonstration first of the plus two strength potion. Now, once a steron does bite her, and what happens is she'll part a ways with a plus two strength potion. This is permanent. You won't be able to lose it. This is mainly for, I say, melee glasses and such. But still, for this build, I definitely advise getting the plus two strength. It'll help you out nicely, especially on some strength checks. And uh, yeah, we're getting the potions. Now I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate this. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and move to, you guessed, that mirror loss. So our paladin is going to drink it up. Let's see where it's at. It looks like a regular potion bottle. So once we do that, we'll uh, move our strength from instance 18 to 20. So plus true strength is a must from Act 2. Let's move on to the next one. Last but not least is the mirror loss. So here's the deal, everyone. The mirror loss is like this. After you get some past some intelligence checks, some people respect their characters for more intelligence and charisma. What happens is you get to pick what you want to uh, lose. Now, if you get lucky like I did with this paladin, you get to pick what you gain. Now, one through six is exactly the same as the loss, but I'll definitely go over them. Number one, you pick this plus two strength. Number two, plus two dex. That's what you want for this build. Seriously, pick that one. Number three is plus two constitution. Number four is plus two intelligence. Number five is, you guessed it, plus two wisdom. And number six is plus two charisma. I definitely advise losing something like, I should say, either wisdom or strength. Now, in this demonstration, I'm just picking the plus two charisma. But still, once again with this build, go for plus two dexterity. And if you're like 20 dexterity, it'll boost you up to 22. Now, let's uh, do go over the before and after with these permanent ability score boosts. Oh, I forgot to mention, if I didn't, those uh, losses, that will get cured, you guessed it, by a remove curse spell. So here's the before and after permanent stat boosts. Before, strength is at 10. Dexterity, 20. Do a normal level up from 2 to 12. Constitution, 16. Intelligence, 8. 
Wisdom 14 and Charisma, you guessed it, 10. Now, after the plus 2 Strength Potion, now boost your Strength to 12. Dexterity is 22, 23 if you decide to spare Auntie Ethel. Constitution is 16, Intelligence 8, Wisdom 14, and Charisma 10. That's about it for permanent ability score boosts. Next up are the Tadpole Powers. For the Tadpole Powers, I split it into two categories before using the Astral Touch Tadpole, aka the Astral Tadpole, and definitely after. So let's start with the before. Now, here are the Tadpole Powers before you decide to consume the Astral Touch Tadpole. Favorable beginnings with attack rolls or give you advantage in dialogue. This is a really good tap hole power. I advise definitely getting this first because, yeah, in combat, you're going to use the boost attack rolls big time. Now, uh, Charm prevents a foe attacking you for one turn. So if a, another foe sees you, cast a Charm on and they'll attack someone else. Shield thralls make a shield on you or your allies. That's 10 hit points. When that 10 hit point shield goes, any foes around the area get stunned. This is a nice ability to crowd control. Then you can do some nice extra damage against stunned foes. Psionic Backlash. When a foe casts a spell, you do 1d4 damage per caster level. Now, this is a, a great way to troll some spell casters. I use this quite a bit. Just remember, go back into stealth after you use that if you're in stealth. Drain ability. An attack can either drain strength, that's melee, or dex range at the first attack. This is actually uh, very good. We're going to use Dread Ambush a lot for our first attack, so our melee will uh, drop their strength down very nicely. Now, I decided to add this one different than the rogue ones, called the weak. When your foe has few hit points less than your tadpole power count, it dies instantly. Rest deals around 1 to 4 damage, which is psychotic. This is a great ability to abuse because if a foe has less than, I should say, 7 tadpole powers on their hit point range, yeah, you kill them instantly. It's an instant kill. You want that. Let's move on to the after. Welcome to the wonderful world of Halfway Point from becoming a Mind Flayer. Well, almost. Anyways, let's go over these after the Astral Touch Tadpoles. Black Hole OP AoE Attack. This thing is very powerful. It has five charges, but it does a lot of damage. Late game, I'm going to say I killed many foes with it. Fly. Gain the ability to fly. Use it around the battlefield. This is great. You kill one foe, then you move on to the next foe, next to them, and then set up your stealth or something like that. Repulsor, AoE pushback damage attack. So if foes surround you, use this, then run away. Now next up is free cast. Next ability, spells or anything else is free of charge to you. So if you want to use a long rest ability, but you don't want to, of course, expend its charges, pop free cast, then that ability. Absorb intellect. Gobble up a foe's intellect, lowering their intelligence by one per turn, and heal your wounds for five turns. So they're going to lose five intelligence during the course of that turn. And uh, this will, uh, of course, heal you. 1d8 hit points for 5 turns, so you get 1 through 8 hit points healed instantly, which is very good. Now on to the gear advice. I have decided to go ahead and split this into two categories. Gear you want to get by the end of Act 1 and end game gear. If it says an act, a location, make sure you do not leave the area in that act until you get it. So let's go ahead and start with by the end of Act 1 gear. Now uh, this is the headgear you want to get by the end of Act 1. Shadow Mesobranzian, gain the Shrouded and Shadow ability, same as the Invisibility spell. Now this is very good. You attack a foe, for instance, you kill him. However, you don't want to, you know, use your, I should say, abilities and such. Well, you pop this sucker, you're invisible. Make sure you don't do anything. Just position yourself to a good spot, then attack next round. Loot it from the Pale Corpse in the Myochondric Colony in Act 1. Must help the Myochondric Colony for access to the body. Or if you feel real evil or so, slaughter the camp to get the access. Now here's a good alternative in case you hadn't got this yet or you did not get to this point. The Haste Helm. Gains momentum for three rounds. In other words, you're going to be moving around quite a bit with this once you equip it. Lock chest in the Blight of Village in Act 1. Either have a stair on door or if you feel like it, Jimmy the Lock. Let's move to the next one. Now for chests, this is a bit different than a rogue version of this, unless you, of course, you multi-class and go with rogue gear. And Mantite Scale Mail, this will give you 16 AC, all incoming damage is reduced by 1, cannot be critical hit upon, that's the best thing right there. When a melee attack hits you, the attacker is set reeling for 2 turns. That means they'll uh, have a minus 1 attack on their rolls, of course, which is good. At the Mantite Forge in the Underdark 2, which is the Grim Forge in Act 1. You got to defeat Grim in order to fully access the, I say, Forge. Now you get this bad boy. Just remember you have two Mithral ore in order to make some. So this is one of them you should definitely use for. Now, in case you can't find other alternatives or so, you get real lucky. Get yourself a Scale Mail plus one or a plus two. 
if you really roll a 20. They're all over the place. Damien usually sells those anyways. I should say definitely in a Druid's Grove. Unless, you, of course, you save the Tieflings. Then good luck finding a plus one or two at that point. Let's move on. Now, I put these there for a few reasons, but here we go. For gloves, gloves of dexterity. Dexterity is set to 18. And, of course, this gives you a plus one attack. Get the Yankee Crushes is that. I cannot pronounce her name. I'll do her last name. Jira. Yeah, she's an NPC that sells a whole bunch of good things. So buy it from her before attacking because she has some great stuff. In fact, buy all of her inventory. If you can't definitely steal from her after that, do so. Now, here's a good alternative in case you have not reached that point yet or you did not get to it. I say did not get it, actually. The Gloves of Power on hit can inflict 1d4 penalty to the target's attack rolls and saving throws. This also gives you a Slay of Hands plus 1. Now, Goblin Boss Zar Krug in front of the Druid's Grove entrance drops this. So, first time you get to a Druid's Grove, it's that annoying boss. Well, at the time, it's annoying because the way he is. Still, loot the body. It's all right. Let's move on. Now, for boots, I did similar to my Rogue because I felt like these are two best options. Disintegrating Nightwalkers can't be in web, entangle, or in stair and cannot slip on grease or ice. Gain the Misty Step per spell. So you got a free shot missing step if you're a Gith Yankee. I'm going to say right now, with the boots, you have not one, two, but three uses of that spell. True Soul Near drops this in the Grimforge Underdark area in Act 1. So go ahead, kill True Soul Near, or let him die in the cave. Now here's a good alternative, Line Breaker Boots. Once per turn, when you dash, you gain Wrath for two turns. Wrath is when you gain a plus one to uh, damage with melee weapons. You also gain a Athletics plus one. Walk pins in the Share Sanctum in Act 1. This is dropped by Beastmaster Zerk. If you could definitely steal from him, that's fine. But if you want to kill him, go ahead and go for it. Let's get to the next set of equipment. Now, here are the necklaces. I decided to uh, go a little bit roguish for uh, those as well. Moon Drop Pendant when the wearer has 50% less hit points. Well, what happens is they don't provoke attacks opportunity with this necklace. This is a very good necklace because if you've been moving around quite a bit, stealthing in and out and such, well, abuse this. Now, solve the Sloon Magic Chest Puzzle in the Albert Cave in Act 1. Just don't bring Shadow Heart to the puzzle. She will highly disapprove of this method. Now, here's a nice alternate amulet of Misty Step game. Misty Step spell to use. That's a total of four Misty Steps. Number one, I say if you're a Gith Yankee, of course. If the Gith Yankee's ability, you get that, number one. Number two is the Gloomstalker version of that. Number three is the boots and now the necklace. So you get to move around quite a bit, which is uh, good, especially in tough battles. In the Shatter Sanctum at True Soul Gut Quarters in Act 1, there is ways to get into uh, her quarters, and believe me, it's easy. So let's move on. Now, here are the rings I set up for like a melee class and such, since you're technically one as well with this build. Now, Crusher Band, this gives you movement speed plus three. Steal or loot Crusher to get this in the Goblin Camp in Act 1. More movement is uh, great. I'll tell you, you move around the battlefield much more. Caustic Band, you deal plus two acid damage to foes. This is uh, really nice. Uh, Deirdre's Bone Cloak sells this at the Mitochondria Colony under Dark in Act 1. There's a lot of stuff there you want to buy. Now, here's some good alternatives. I saw a list. Ring of Absolute Force. Use of Thunder Wave spell. Now, if you've been Absolute Branded, then, uh, of course, you add plus one to the extra damage. Sergeant Thrin in the Grim Forge area in Act 1 drops this. Either uh, kill him or someone else will kill him at some point. The Spark Wall. Well, the Sparks Wall. Sorry about that. Cannot be electrocuted. Electric resistance increases as uh, well. Arcane Tower Basement under Dark in Act 1. Raid this tower. It has some good stuff in it. So let's move on. Now for weapons, I decide to do a bit like a rogue. You're asking, why is that Fenton? Well, let me explain. Yeah, you, know, you see if it's a well, it's finesse, then it goes with your dexterity instead of strength. And that's why it gives you edge in combat. That's why I went with it, similar like a rogue. But here we go. Knife of the Undermountain King. This is a short sword plus two. The wielder scores a critical hit when rolling a 19. When they roll two damage or less, they re-roll the dice, taking the highest result. You mess up, you roll again. It's good. You have advantage on attack rolls against lightly or heavily skewered targets when using this blade as well. So you're going against a rogue, you spot him or so, and go ahead and just have some fun with it. Now, the same person that does uh, sell you the Gloves of Dexterity, Merchant Jera, 
well, guess what? In the Githyanki Crash, in the Mountain Pass, we'll also uh, sell this too. Buy the gloves, buy this, and anything else from her as well, well before killing her. Now this is a nice uh, offhand one, Hunter's Dagger. This is a plus one dagger. On hit, the target must succeed a DC 13 Constitution saving throw or become ruptured. In other words, they bleed out. Row uh, Moonglow in the Shower Sanctum of Knack 1 sells this. He's all around the Shower Sanctum in different places. So if you see the, I think, Halfling, buy it. So let's uh, move on to the alternatives. Now here's some alternative weapons. Short Sword of First Blood. Deals an additional 1 to 8 piercing damage to targets that still have all their hit points. So if they have full hit points, it's a great way to tenderize them up. This is around the Underdark Beach in the Underdark area in Act 1. That's where the Great Dwarfs are at. And you could go on their boat to get to the Grim Forge. It's around 3 or 4 various spots. There's only, uh, I should say, one short sword. Now, uh, here's the deal. You could either go for a plus 1 dagger or a short sword for the offhand. Those are very through the act. If you cannot find any of these, then of course uh, get a long sword plus one for the main hand, and then like I said before, offhand like a short sword or a dagger as uh, well. Now just remember, long sword just uh, goes with strength. It's not going to be finesse unless it says so. Let's uh, move on to the ranged weapons. Now for ranged weapons, I did it similar to my paladin, I think barbarian, and of course uh, fire builds. Titan string bow. This is a plus one long bow. This long bow does damage equal to your strength mod. Brim and the Zents hideout sells this in Act 1 after helping out the Zents on their quest, which is the missing shipment. Side with the Zents, kill the Gnolls, and then of course, uh, don't steal anything from them, then they'll show you the way to the hideout and the password and such. Here's a good alternative, Giant Breaker plus Heavy 1 Crossbow. Foes get a minus 1 attack for 2 rounds when hit. But the same person sells the Titan String Bow sells this as well. Same thing as before. Now here's a great alternative, Boat of the Banshee. On hit, possibly inflicted Frightened. And if the target's frightened next time you hit him again, that's a 1d4 against frightened targets. Kalsar Greymon in the Grimforge Undark area in Act 1 sells this, also drops it too. I advise buying it. It's a much more peaceful solution. Now, ranged weapons only use if you cannot get in the melee range and you have Dread Ambush in the first round. Great way to start things up as well. Let's move on to the end game gear. Now, please note once again, if it says an act, an area, and said act, make sure you do not leave the area and definitely the act before getting said item. So here we go. Helm of Baldrinian heals two hit points per round, plus one armor class, saving throws as well on the plus one side. Cannot be stunned. That is really good. Less crowd control upon you. Cannot be critical hit against. That's great. Defeat the Wormway Trials and the boss to get this in act three. Yeah, very best helm. Now, for some reason you cannot get this, here's a good alternative. I have about another one as well. The Hell Dusk Helm can see through normal and magical darkness. This is really good. Also, if you don't have dark vision, you get that as well. Cannot be blinded at all. Yep, no uh, anti-crowd control that you get. Plus two saving throws against spells. This is good. Where is also immune to critical hits. Just like the other helmet, that's perfect. House of Hope in a locked room in Act 3. Make sure you bust through the room in order to get this and also before leaving it. Last but not least, Mask of Soul Perception gain a plus 2 bonus to the following. Attack rolls, initiative rolls, and perceptive checks. Or perception checks. Those are actually all good. Really good. Now, as a bonus, you get Detect Thoughts just like the spell. No more of those annoying potions. And the Devil's Feed to steal in Act 3. It's upstairs. Go into the room by disabling the trap and then go ahead and steal the uh, nice helmet to have for yourself. Let's move on. Now, here's some cloaks. I have exactly two. You should get Shade Slayer Cloak while hiding. The number you need to roll a critical hit when attacking is reduced by one. This effect can stack with other items. This is a really good cloak. You'll be hiding quite a bit after you do attack. You're more of a hit and run type of person. Sticky Dondo sells this in the Lower City Sewers Guild Hall in Act 3. This is a very good item to get. So get to the Guild Hall, be friendly with them, and buy this. Here's a nice alternative, Cloak of Protection. This gives you a plus one AC and plus one saving throws. Sold by Core Master Tally at the last light in an Act 2. Yep, buy everything from Core Master Tally. This one sells some great stuff, not only for yourself, but your party as well. Let's go to the next set of equipment. Now, chests are a bit different. I had to pick the two best ones. So here's the deal, Hell Dusk Armor. You can use Heavy Armor when you wear this, just like Heavy Armor Proficiency. When a caster spell hits you and you make a save, caster takes burning damage. This is really good. Immune to burn. This is another great thing as well. Resistance in fire. This is wonderful. Especially you pick that wasteland resistance on fire. Yeah, you add to that. 
Take three less damage from all sources. Now, that is really good. You, uh, Raphael drops this in Act 3. Yeah, you go in the House of Hope when you meet him. Yeah, go kill him for it. Best, I should say, heavy armor in the entire game. Now, for some reason, Lizel has it. She doesn't want to let this go. You haven't got to it yet. Here's a great alternative. Armor of Agility. Add your Dex modifier to your armor class. So your Dex modifier, for example, is 5. Add that to that armor class. Additionally, this armor does not impose disadvantages on stealth ability checks. You heard right. Usually, medium armor says you have disadvantage in stealth, especially heavy armor. This does not. Well worth it, in case you can't get the other one. Oh, yeah. One more thing. Saving throw plus 2. Always nice. Sold by Gloomy uh, Fettinson at the Stormshore Armory in Act 3. Next to that is the dead shot. So clean both, in I should say, shopkeepers' inventories out. Let's search ahead. Here's the deal. We're going to talk about gloves. This is a bit different than my melee and, of course, rogue build. So here we go. Bone spike gloves. Your attacks ignore the falling resistance, slashing, piercing, and blunt damage. Now, that is really good. You especially want DPS. Put these babies on. Now, here's how to get it. Strangler Luke drops this. Yeah, you kill him and get it. Now, here's the deal. Loot this as soon as you kill him, or else after the ambush in the Underdark City, his body vanishes in Act 3. So, you murder the dude, you take his gloves, you wear them. That's it. Do not at all uh, leave his body left unlooted. Otherwise, it goes poof. Trust me. It happened to me. I had to reload to save just to get this again. Now, here's a good alternative, Legacy of the Masters. This gives you a plus two attack and damage rolls with weapons. We're going to be using two weapons, so this is a good thing. Now, uh, here's the deal. You have plus one strength saves. That's another great thing as well. Damien Stills is in Act 3, Lower City. And if you can, there's some good stuff you want to buy from him as well. So, let's get some next set of equipment to go over. Now, here's some boots. If you still kept the disintegrating night walkers in Act 1, you're going to be using them. They're great. So, it's already in the Act 1 section where you get it at. So, here's a reminder once again. Pause the video if you need to. Here's a great alternative in case you want to move up in the world. Helldust boots cannot be moved by magic or normal means. Forgot to hit normal, but that's all right. Immune to difficult terrain. Now, you already have that immunity, but still, it's nice. When you fail a saving throw, you can use your reaction to succeed instead. So you mess up on save throw, hit that reaction, and that's it. Teleport to area, and when you do teleport, you do 2 to 16 damage in the area. Now, this is in Lord Gortash's room. Either steal the key from him or murder the SOB for the key. Let's uh, go to the next section. After doing some research and tests, also uh, figuring out what's better, yeah, I went with the melee route for the necklaces. Amulet of Greater Health. Constitution set to 23. That's a bonus there. More health. Advantage on Constitution saving throws. That's nice too. In the archives at the House of Hope in Act 3. Now, uh, while you're there, go ahead and steal the Gauntlets of Hill Giant Strength. And if you want to, the Orphic Hammer. So, here's an alternative. In case you don't want to do any of that stealing stuff or you haven't got there yet. Surge and Subjugation Amulet. When scoring a critical hit on a humanoid, the wearer can be paralyzed for two turns. That's another crowd control thing you abuse and use. Mouse Storm drops this at the House of Healing in Act 2. Two ways to kill him. Here, talk him to killing himself or battle him in combat. If you do the talk route, use Shadow Heart. She'll make it easier for you to get this. Let's move on. As for rings, I decide to go with the melee stuff. So, uh, here we go. Killer Sweetheart, when you kill a creature, your next attack roll will be an instant critical hit. Now, this is really powerful. It's a long rest type of deal, but still, you're facing a tough boss, you do a critical hit. Like, for example, with the Dread Ambusher, yeah, this will be good times. Self-same trial in the Gauntlet is short in Act 2. Do not leave the Gauntlet. In fact, do not leave the trial first, because don't get the orb there. The ring's usually on your clone. Get that ring. Yeah, that's it. So stay in Act 2, the Gauntlet Shard, once again to get this. Sorry I have to remind you, but this is one of the best rings in the entire game for this build. Here's a good ring, the other one. Ring of Regeneration. At the start of combat, you regenerate 1 to 4 hit points. Now, this is really nice, especially in tough situations. Roland sells this in Act 3 at the Sorcerer's Sundries. Also, Roland's not there. Another uh, NPC might sell this as well. Now, here's a, not another alternative. Ring of Free Action. You ignore the effects of difficult terrain and cannot be paralyzed or restrained. Now, the uh, NPC that gives you the Strength Potion will sell this in Act 2 at the Moonrise Towers. Yeah, the one that Asteron bites. You uh, definitely want to get this from the Drow. In fact, like I said before, clean out her inventory. 
Here's another reason. Risky ring, you get advantages on attack rolls. However, that turns around on disadvantages on saves. It's a great change off with this build. Acha also sells this in Act 2. Get this ASAP, just like with the Ring of Free Action. Let's go to the weapons. Now, for endgame, I went with the light weapon path. For dual wielding, it's uh, great towards the end. So here we go. Crimson Mischief. This weapon deals an additional 1d4 piercing damage against targets with 50% of their hit points or fewer. This is all around. The uh, weapon is a short sword, so it's a plus 2 short sword off the bat. Now, if this is in your main hand only, when you deal an advantage attack, you deal plus 7 piercing damage. Offhand only, when you attack with offhand, your ability mod gets added to the, the uh, damage. So, for example, it's the weapon damage, the enchantment, then you add your mod of plus 5, your dexterity is up to 20. Drop by or in the red in Act 3. Bloodthirst, this is a plus 2 weapon enchantment dagger. Number 4, a critical hit need is reduced by 1. This stacks, by the way, folks. So, if you get the dead shot, some other items, this is great. Main hand only, foes hit with this is weak to your piercing damage. Now couple that with the bone gloves, you're uh, golden. Now offhand only, when a creature misses you, you cast true strike next. So in other words, your attack rolls get boosted in the next round or so. Reward for defeating or in the red. So yeah, kill the or in the red for both of these and you're golden. Let's go to the alternatives. Here's some alternatives. Rhapsody, this is a plus one dagger, gains a plus one attack rolls and spell save DC. This uh, max stat on this is 3. Possibly inflict bleeding when hitting a creature with this weapon while hiding or invisible. You'll be hiding quite a bit, so you just dart in and out. This is one reason why you get that. I advise putting this in your offhand. Cathador drops this in Act 3 as well. Uh, sword of Life Stealing. This is a plus 2 short sword. On a critical hit, target takes an extra 1 to 10 necro damage. That's the green damage. As long as it's not undead or a construct. When uh, this happens, also you gain 10 temporary hit points. Damien sells this in the last light in an Act 2. If you're really lucky and good, this might be in Act 3, but definitely buy this in Act 2. Let's get to the ranged weapons. Now, I put the ranged weapons for two reasons. For the item stats, and of course you can't get into melee range at the start of combat. You can use Dread Ambusher with ranged weapons. Grant May, hard to pronounce, is a plus 3 longbow, legendary by the way. Inflicts Guiding Light upon target being hit, just like the spell. Gains a special haste without all the bad effects. So you get the extra attack, the movement, the plus 2 AC and such. This object shines with a glowing light in a radius of 6 meters. You're like a bright light, so that's the little bit downside. Steel Watch of Titan drops this in Act 3 at the Steel Watch Foundry. Now here's another uh, good one. This is a, a great alternative in case you want to be bright light. The Dead Shot, plus 2 Longbow. The number you need to roll a critical hit is reduced by one. This stacks, by the way. You got the dagger, you got potions and such. You'll be critical hitting more often than not. The wielder doubles their proficiency bonus when rolling ranged attacks with this weapon unless they have a disadvantage. So by Fritz, the firecracker in the lower city in Act 3. Same person that uh, is near the armor agility to, to go ahead and buy. Yeah, go ahead and buy that from her as well. And that's about it for end game equipment. Or I should say all equipment. So next up is potion, elixirs, and oils. I'm going to go ahead and recommend some potions, elixirs, and oils. Oh yeah, you definitely want to use oils a lot in this build, so let's do this. As always, make sure you definitely get some healing potions of all types, because you may never know if you're in danger and such. Potion of Haste, this is a really abuse potion in the game. You gain extra action, which is good, plus 2 AC, which is nice, advantage on dexterity saving throws. Where you have high dexterity, so let's add some more advantage to it. And double movement speed. That's all the good news. Bad news is you slow down and such after two or three rounds. This is a great potion to use. Use it to definitely wipe out bosses quickly and such. Potion of flying. Same as the fly spell. Great for flying around. Potion of invisibility. Invisible on yourself. This lasts for 10 rounds. Any type of action definitely breaks this except for moving around. But still, this is a good potion to drink. So this way you set yourself up for next attack. Let's go to Elixirs. Now we're at the Elixirs. Let's talk about the Elixir of Vigilance. You gain a plus 5 bonus initiative and cannot be surprised. In other words, you cannot be jump off, but the plus 5 initiative is always nice. This build will have very high initiative overall, so guess what? Abuse it. Now, Elixir of Viciousness, increase your chance to land a critical hit. Now, this stacks with the other ones. Increase your chance uh, for a critical hit by 1. This is a great Elixir to chug up. Now, last but not least, the Elixir of Bloodlust. Upon killing foe, you get 5 hit points. 
This is temporary and an extra bonus action. So kill someone, you could try to kill another person next time. Let's go to oils. Oil accuracy, coat your weapon, or I say weapons. This will give you a bonus plus two and attack rolls. This is really great. Where's our bane oil? Now, you coat your weapons with this. Its target receives a minus three penalty to spell attack rolls and spell save DC. They also get a disadvantage on maintaining concentration for two turns. This is a real good way to have some fun with some spell casters. Do this on them, and if they try to maintain, like for example, chain lightning, they won't be able to. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'll say this last one. Use any and all poisons on your weapons if you can. Use the uh, lower tier ones on Yard Trash Emnies. As for bosses, use the best ones you can find throughout the uh, game. That's about it for potions, elixirs, and oils. Let's talk about combat demonstration. As always, when you get into combat, try to do two things. With Dread Ambush, or your A, use it to outright kill your foes if you're lucky, or B, if you cannot, at least use some other abilities to weaken them so someone else will definitely finish them off. Yeah, see, unfortunately, I did get a miss. You'll miss from time to time early on. Later on in the game, you get better items, better setup, and more dexterity to make sure those misses are not there at all. So, there we go. We're just going to go ahead and have our Paladin do the right thing by finishing off our foes. So, let's uh, go ahead and uh, switch to the Paladin. And he'll be able to uh, hit him with one hit if we uh, can do that. Or, uh, yeah, see, let's do it. And boom, there you go. Our ranger started the fight like that, and our paladin didn't finish him off. Let's go ahead and talk about Act 3. After you do learn everything, you'll start at some point, be able to go through difficult terrain. So let's uh, take care of this fool. We have men scare as our demonstration doing Dread Ambusher. Yeah, see, uh, the environment's going to be not so hard for us to maneuver. We'll just keep on getting kills after kills. Now, at some point, uh, you cannot use Dread Ambush in one way, use it another way. Then use your spells to definitely help you out, get advantage into the battle. I'm going to go ahead and do some final advice. Here are some final advice before I do end this build video. Try to always open up with Dread Ambush. Or if you cannot do it the melee way, do it the range way. That's why we have range weapons. Now, when you after you're done with your turn, if you have enough movement and such and points, definitely try to stealth, uh, I should say, in. This way, you'll uh, definitely won't be the main target. Yeah, try not to be the main target in your party unless you have a whole bunch of squishies. Then get them to summon. Uh, of course, to uh, do that. Another thing, uh, use your spells. They are really helpful from time to time. As always, drink up your potions, elixirs, and especially use your oils. So you get a nice advantage. If you can't kill an enemy, at least weaken them for your party. So this way, they will kill your enemy for you. Well, everyone, this is it from my Baldur's Gate 3 Pure Ranger Gloomstalker Deadly Dual Wield build video. This is Lord Pent signing off. Thanks for watching, and have a great day or night, and do please stay safe. Please subscribe to my channel for more classic and modern Dungeons & Dragons walkthroughs, builds, guides, and more just like this. If you like what you see, then uh, go ahead and pick my suggestion on the upper left-hand corner or YouTube suggestion on the bottom left-hand corner. I'm going to go ahead and relax in this nice chair.